Good morning, you guys and gals. Nice to see you today. Uh, and those of you on the internet that are joining us this morning, um, we've got a lot going on today. So uh, uh, Daniel um, is here with us today, and his uh, Andre, who is somebody that through Daniel we help support, but they're going to be talking to you in a little bit. Um, I'm excited for you to hear what Andre does. It is absolute, besides being able to climb mountains as part of his mission, um, he has some exciting stuff to share Let's with you here. Let's look on the screen to John 16 and read these with me aloud, will you? These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. I just love that verse. I hope it speaks to you every week like it does to Let's me. Let's go back to prayer, can we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to gather in your name. We thank you for the privilege of being able to gather in your name. Lord, there are a few countries around this uh, globe, around this world that, that just don't allow it. And we are, just as Andre just said, we are so blessed in this country. And that is one of the huge blessings that we can serve you and that your name is wonderful throughout this country. Lord, we ask you to be with all of those here and those that are watching on the internet right now that you would open their hearts to what Johnny would uh, preach to us today, that you would speak through him in a mighty way and that we would find out more about this man named Daniel as we go ahead with our study of this book. Lord, your Bible is real. It's not a book. It is 66 books. And it, it just preaches, Lord, to us when we want to take the time to read it and learn more about you. And that's always my prayer here in our little church, that everybody would be challenged in such a way that they would pick up that Bible every single day and read about you and your son, Jesus Christ, and, and the things that are even to this day so appropriate, so right on the money. So be with us today as we worship, as we listen to the word, as we read the word together, and we pray it in your name as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Would you take your Bibles, Amen. please? Or you can look on the screen, either one. We are looking at Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58, and we are reading verses 5 through 9. Is it a fast, this which I choose, a day for a man to humble himself? Is it the bowing one's head like a reed and for spreading out sackcloth and ashes as a bed? Will you call this a fast, even an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast which I choose, to loosen the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free, and break every yoke. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light will break out like the dawn and your recovery will speedily spring forth and your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the speaking wickedness. 
And then if you will turn over to the book of Psalm. And we are looking at Psalm 91. By the way, this is a beautiful song that I sang in college many, many times. It's a great, great scripture. Psalm 91, and we are looking at 11 through 16. Four. He will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands that you do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent you will trample down because he has loved me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. Wow. And then turn, if you would, back to the New Testament, to the book of John. And we are looking at chapter 4. John chapter 4. And we're starting in verse 46 and going through 54. Therefore, he came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and was imploring him to come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started off. As he was now going down, his slaves met him, saying that his son was living. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. Then they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household. This is again a second sign that Jesus performed what he had come out of Judea into Galilee. Wow. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to see you. And I always want to thank you so much. It's an honor to come and bring the word to you. Hope that your ears and your eyes and your heart uh, may be open to what God has to say to you personally. And thank you for welcoming my friends. Uh, Y'all know Nico the Giant uh, as well. I think Jacob is a little bit taller than him, but uh, it's just so good to have you. Thank you so much for your testimony this morning. So if you will turn with me to the sixth chapter of the book of Daniel, and this is the second half of the two-part message that we started last week. Now, if you've been traveling with us through the book of Daniel, we let you know that he is a young prophet along with other uh, guys like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who uh, was invaded by the Babylonian Empire because uh, Jerusalem and Judah were disobedient to God. Therefore, God allowed uh, the Babylonians to come in and take them. And these young men and women were taken to Babylon and then Babylon was overthrown uh, by the Persia and the Medians, and now you uh, have Darius, uh, the king, taken over because of what Nebuchadnezzar uh, had to learn. And, 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 so, and so last week, as we began to, to, to look at things, we, uh, we, we found out that, that through what you will call uh, the anatomy of conspiracy, uh, Daniel was sentenced 
to the lion's den. And sometimes we don't understand how he got there, but when you begin to look at the details of that, you see how he got there as a young kid. As you and I went through summer, uh, you know, Sunday school, we learned about David and, and all these great men and women of the Old Testament. But we also learned about Daniel in the lion's den. And these verses that are remaining are to talk about Daniel in the lion's den. God's, listen to me, demonstration in the den. God's demonstration in the, in the den. So no matter where you are in life, no matter what situation you find yourself in, God is still demonstrating his presence, amen? He, he is still reaching out and touching people. I don't care if you're in the arena. I don't care if you're in a pit. I don't care if you're in a balcony. God's there. And so this story has been told uh, for many generations, but we want to give you uh, the details of it. Now, the beauty uh, of the end of chapter 6 moves you into chapter 7 next week, and Rick is going to bring that to you. And now this is where things begin to change, because in those first six chapters, you hear about Daniel, you hear about Shadrach, you hear about uh, Abednego uh, and Meshach. But watch this, when you get to chapter 7, you start getting into these two words that we've been preparing you for that you need to really get a hold of. Now, one of the words is called eschatology. Now, this is the end times. And there are people today who believe we're living in those end times. And, 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 it's, and it's strange that 600 years before Jesus Christ, that 2,000 years later, the very thing that Daniel starts prophesying, and you're going to have to start hearing that next week, is happening today. That's just to show you how real the Bible is. It's not just one book. Michael said earlier, a uh, young man said earlier, it's 66 books. And so that word eschatology means end time. But then there's another word called apocalyptic. Now, apocalyptic are the events that happen in the end time, watch this, by which man's soul is going to be judged. Every thought, every act, Everything that you're doing today and will have done and will do will be up under the judgment of God. Now, let me say this to you. It'll be a loving judgment. <laughs> It'll be a gracious judgment. It will. Because God is slow. Uh, he wishes that no one perish, but that all men come to repentance. And it's the kindness of God. I'm so glad he was kind to me. That leads us to uh, repentance. And so I want you to understand that. But today, what you're going to get in these last eight or nine verses, and we're going to hit them, okay? You're going to get a king with a conscience. You're going to get a commissioner named Daniel who has confidence. We'll talk about that. And then you're going to get a demonstration that leads people to conviction. A king with a conscience who makes a decision. And he makes a decision about a guy named Daniel who's a humble man who has confidence. And then God demonstrates himself in this den. This den is really a, a cave with a hole in it. Have you ever had anybody over you, an authority figure over you? who made a decision, and because of the decision that they made, you had to face the consequences of that, and those consequences were not good, and the decision was not good. And then God showed up. Let me say this to you. God is doing that today. Right now. Right now. And that's what these verses are going to bring to you. So before I start, I'm going to give you the end of the message in the beginning, okay? I'm going to give you the end of it. I want you to listen to me. This is going to show you, listen real close, how God can take a king with a conscience who, watch this, reluctantly sentenced an innocent, humble commissioner who had confidence, okay? and then releases them both. King Darius and Daniel releases them both through this demonstration that brings a conviction in your heart 
and in my heart, watch this, that results in a revelation of who he is. A revelation. You see, anytime God does something to a point where a revelation comes, you can't help but recognize it. And what comes from your heart is worship and praise. I want you all to know that's what happened to CSU football team Friday night. Because when I text them, all they could say is praise be to God. That's all they could say. Because of some things we're doing together behind the scenes. Right there on the football field, on the basketball court, in life, doesn't make any difference. God has not somehow distanced himself. So let's crack this open. You guys ready to do that? Let's crack this thing open and see what's going on. Let's look here first at verse 16 in Daniel, the sixth uh, chapter here. It says, then the king was, uh, gave orders and Daniel you know, was brought in and cast into the lion's den. The king spoke and said to Daniel, your God whom you constantly serve will himself deliver you. The king, okay had to give the order, but he gave it reluctantly because if you looked at the first 15 verses of what we taught last week, you would see he was tricked, and he was tricked through what you would call the anatomy of conspiracy. There's lies that come. You have to bring up a bunch of false charges. I guess they did that to our Lord Jesus Christ. And what happened was is that when he said, yeah, he realized that he was getting ready to sentence an innocent man. Have you ever done something wrong to somebody? Or you did something that you thought was right and later on to figure out that it was wrong. See, I wish more, I wish more Christians would confess that. I wish they would. And he realized he was wrong. So he gave those orders reluctantly. But I'm so glad that he was a leader, watch this, that had a conscience. And there's a lot of leaders today that done seared their consciences. They, they just want power. They, they just want to be able to control people. They're, they're, they're not there to equip. Uh, they're, 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 they're just not there to train. They're, they're not there to raise people up. They're, they're, they're just there to give orders. But this guy had a conscience. It's so nice to be led by somebody that has a conscience. Because I remember as a young man that my conscience bothered me so much and it was nothing more than a place for God's conviction. My conscience bothered me all the time. You know what I told my conscience when I was a young man? Conscience, if you don't bother me, I won't bother you. <laughs> yeah. Guy had a conscience. But he brought Daniel in. They had to go get him. And they brought him and they threw him in this den. They didn't say, we're going to open up the door, brother, just walk on in. It wasn't that. They pitched this guy down there. And this is, this, this, man, this is a big cave. This is a big cave with a hole in it. And they, 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 they put him in a den of lions, man. Those are big cats. I don't know if you've ever seen one up close. But I know Vic and I every year, you know, make our way to the Denver Zoo. Man, he's some big animals. You know, and Daniel was down there with him. He was down there with him. But look what, look what this king with a conscience says. He says, Daniel, he says this. He says, your God, whom you, watch this, constantly serve. Remember that. No matter what's going on, if you have success, if you're down, if you're out, it doesn't make any difference. You constantly continue to serve God no matter what. It says whom you constantly serve. Guess what? He, he himself is going to deliver you. Because see, the king knew that his hands were tied. And if this was going to happen, the only one that could deliver him is the God that he was serving. He, the king knew that. 
So he had to commend himself, commend Daniel to his own God. And then the next thing it says here, for people, it says in verse 17, And a stone was brought and laid over the mouth of the den. The king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet ring of his nobles so that nothing might be changed in regard to Daniel. Now, the seal was there because it was a royal declaration legislation. And the seal was there not because somehow it was going to hold the stone on top of it. It just meant that man couldn't mess with it. He couldn't mess with it. The nobles couldn't mess with it. Okay. And he sealed it. I wonder if you remember a tomb that was sealed some 2,000 years ago. Uh, Think about that. It it was sealed for a reason. Because the king is saying there's nothing I can do and there's nothing nobody else can do. I want y'all to know that's a perfect opportunity for God himself. See, when man can't do it, we need to go to God. We need to go to God before man can't do it anyway. But when man can't do it, we need to know we've already been to God. Amen. I want y'all to know that. But if you go into him consistently, it don't matter. So here's the king that had a conscience. Watch this part here in verse, uh, verse 18. Then the king went off to his place and he spent the night fasting. And no other or no entertainment was brought before him. And his sleep fed for, fled from him. When Michael did so beautiful a reading to you, Isaiah 58, I would like to challenge you to read that whole chapter one day. Because this king knew something about fasting. Now, fasting is nothing more than starving the flesh so that your spirit can feed. It, it should be a regular discipline of the Christian uh, believer. That, that you just fast maybe once and every now, every now and then and just say, God, I got to have something from you. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to stop eating those cookies for a while. I, I, I'm going to skip dessert. I'm going to skip a couple of meals because I got to hear from you. And in Isaiah 58, that's what God is calling uh, what people to want to worship him and get his attention to them. And he, he opens up by saying, is this the kind of fast that, that I call you into? Because if you want to do a real fast, two things must have to happen. You must humble yourself and you must pray. And that's all the king knew how to do. I don't have nothing else left but to pray. Sometimes for your kids, uh, sometimes for your husband, uh, sometimes for your wife or your friend. Sometimes all you can do is say, God, I don't know what else to do. I'm just going to throw them at your mercy and I'm going to fast a little bit. Because sometimes, you know, your kids mess up so much you'll be fasting for 30 years. <laughs> I, I used to be a lot bigger than I was. I want you all to know that. <laughs> yeah. But I want you to understand what he was doing. He had to put Daniel in God's hand, but he also had to fix himself to where, you know what? This is a situation that's out of my hands, and I got to go to God. He went to fasting. This is what he did. So here you see in this first third of this message, you see a king with a conscience who's humble, know how to pray, and get on his knees. If I was you all, If I'm working for somebody, I would pray that my leaders are like that. And if you are a leader, I hope the people up under you are praying for you, that you be the person that's on your knees. Because that's why God tells us in Timothy to pray for our leaders so that we may have peace. Because there is nothing more miserable than an ungodly leader who don't care for people or ungodly parents who don't want to see their kids come to know Jesus or ungodly administration who don't care about what God thinks about people. So you start today. Look at the second third of this group, of this chapter or group of scripture. Are y'all with the brother so far? I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just giving you something here that the scripture is saying. Now, all of a sudden, you see this humble guy, this humble commissioner, this, 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 this governor-type guy who's in office. A plot has been made towards him, and all of a sudden, man, they shoot him off into this den. Now, 
the beauty of what you are just about to read is that God doesn't let us in on what he actually did in the den. All we can do is read about it. God didn't let us in and all the things that he did inside of the tomb with Jesus. All we knew is, is that the tomb was open. He wasn't there. And for 40 days, he hung out with about 500 people. Evidence. But he lets us a little bit in on this thing. And let me say this to you people. When you're in the den, when you are by yourself, God is with you. When you think you're alone, you're not. Now watch this. Look, 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 look what happens here. Verse 19. It says, then the king went off to his palace. I'm sorry, verse 19. Then the king arose with the dawn and at the break of day and went in haste to the lion's den. Let me say this to you, ladies and gentlemen. That guy had an urgency. That guy knew that there was something emergent about what he was doing. This is an emergency. I threw that man down there. That's a good brother. I hate to see him die. And you know what? I got to get there and see if God did something. Is there anything in your heart today that God's telling you is urgent? Is there anything in your heart today that God is telling you is an emergency? Man, you need to get to it. Because God is about to do something. Now watch this verse. Watch it. Watch it. And when he had come near to the near the den to Daniel he cried out with a troubled voice that, that, that means he was nervous he was unsettled he was going to ask the question whether the guy was alive or not but he trembled a little bit because he knew about Neb and his son and he knew about Shadrach Meshach and Abednego. It was news all over the region. So it's possible that God can do it. I, I, I kind of love things because I, 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 told, I told a football team last week, I said, God, I want you to understand something, gentlemen. There is life in the furnace. And for four weeks you've been in the furnace and God is doing something. He ain't done yet. And so when, <laughs> when, when Darius comes to the den, he's, he's speaking through those rocks. He says, hey, brother, hey, Daniel. Back then they'd call him D, okay? Hey, D. Hey, D. Look, I mean, he says something to him. He says, hey, D. He, and, and, and he says what? He, he, he says, look, here, here's what I want to say to you. Now watch this. He calls him again, Daniel, servant of, watch this, the living God. He calls him the living God. God's not dead. Okay, <laughs> then he moves on. And he says, has your God, whom you constantly serve, been able to deliver you from the lions? What a question. I don't think there's a single soul in this room today that don't have a testimony about God delivering you from something. I don't, I don't think there's a single soul in here. Hey, 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 D, man, 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 speak to me if you're alive. Has your God done that? Huh? I mean, you have to go back to Ephesians, the third chapter, the 20th verse. What I usually quote at the end of every service that I give you say, your God, to Jesus Christ, to his name, who is able. To do what? Far above. Watch this. Anything you can think, anything you can dream, anything you can speak, he's able. He's able. Now, you need to say that every day, God, you're able. You're able. And watch. Here's what changes to see. Daniel D. <laughs> says something, and he says, uh, O king. Live forever. Now, you got to know on the other side of that rock, that king is like, you know, moonwalking. What? Hey. Now, either the brother is lying or the, the lions don't start talking like people. But that's a human voice in there. That's something that has being. That's something that has life. And he says, okay, live forever. Now, watch this. Look at, look, 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 look at these next verses. 
He says this, my God. How many of y'all know he's your God? How many of y'all know he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And you can say he's my God. He's my parents' God. He's the God of, ah, yeah. He is my God. Uh, I, you know, I used to tell Vicky all the time, my wife's uh, in here today, you know, every time the kids do well, they're my kids. Every time they do bad, they're her kids. I just want y'all to know that, you know. And then and, and my God sent his angel. Now, if you go back and take a look at Psalm 91, what well, 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 Michael shared that he sang that chapter. Look here. Read it. You know what it says? He says, I will deliver you, watch this, from the young lions. I will give you an angel. Read it. It's right there. And this is David talking about something. And now all of a sudden you hear Daniel saying it. Now, I, I tell you what, just for a moment before we get ready to put the last portion on this scripture, why don't you go to Psalms? Let's look at that. I want to, I, I, I just want you to notice the, uh, the verbiage here. Uh, it, man, it's, it's incredible. Look here at verse 11. It, it says, for he, he will give his what? Angels charge over me. What did, you, what did Daniel say? He sent an angel. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that's not a single person that's born on this earth that don't have an angel over them watching? I've got a guardian angel over me right now. You got one everywhere you go. He's there. And he's got a sword, man. He's ready. Every child has ever been born as an angel. He says, look at here, man. You got a, he, he says, says you got an angel. And then it charges over you and guard you in all your ways. They, they will bear you up in, with their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus quotes this to the devil in the wilderness. You will, uh, you will tread upon lion, on the lion and the cobra. I'm glad they put snakes in there, man, because I don't do snakes. Woo! I don't do snakes, man, any kind. Okay, uh, you know, then it says the young lion and the serpent you will trample down because what? He has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will send him securely, set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. Wow. Yeah, that's your God. 2022. Right now, it's your God. Let's finish this out. And guess what he did, man? He shuts the lion's mouth. You know what that means? I mean, that boy had to be down there for at least 18 hours. So, so you, you, and, and you can't say that, that, that they fed the lions first. That's why they didn't get Daniel. No, look here, man. God closed their mouth. I'm glad because if I was down there, he'd had to close their mouth. Because if they didn't went to growl, then the brother would have passed out. I mean, he'd have been gone. But, it, but, but, but he shut their mouth so that they couldn't speak and they couldn't eat. Daniel says, this is what happened, man. I'm down there watching it, guys. You know why? Because even though the king was restless, I was sleeping. <laughs> yeah, think about it. I was sleeping. And, and, then he, and then he went on to it, and he says this. He, he says, and look, in, in as much as I was found innocent, so how can a man be thrown into jail just because he was praying. How can a man be thrown into jail and get executed simply because he was worshiping his God? You can't stop that. You may be able to silence the man, but you can't silence his worship. You can't. It's impossible. And inasmuch as I was innocent before him and also towards you, king, I did nothing wrong. I have no crime. Committed none. Committed none. This is a beautiful thing. Now watch this. In verse 23, we're getting ready to do the last third here, getting ready to bring it home. It says, then the king was very pleased. That brother was more than just pleased, but he was released. Guess what? Daniel was released too. See, God not only released the king, but he released the king from the decision that he made that went bad. And he released Daniel because Daniel still praised the Lord, still was giving him glory, 
in the midst of the lion's den. Now, one of the things that you want to read history, you go back to the emperor Nero in the first century when the Romans blamed the burning of Rome on Christians, and they put them all in the arena and lit them up uh, on crosses, and they let the lions out on them. And while the lions were eating these people, you know what they were doing? They were singing. They were worshiping. And that's what should happen to the Christian. Even in trouble, he's singing. Because here's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said. Even if he doesn't, he's still our God. That's faith, man. That's a commissioner with confidence. Because like the fiery furnace, when they threw him down in there, Nebuchadnezzar saw another guy who was four instead of three. They were loose. They were walking around. They were free. And they had no smoke in their clothes. And Daniel said, I was not harmed. Think about that. Even those brothers thrown in the furnace, their hair wasn't even singed. Well, you have to have some hair for it to get singed. It just shows you how, how, how meticulous and how specific God is. These are not just stories, ladies and gentlemen. This is real. God knows how to do it. Now, here's how we close this out. Because you've moved from seeing a king that had a conscience to a commissioner, Daniel, who has confidence. Now you saw the demonstration of the fact of God who's getting ready to give a revelation. And watch this, because something has to happen. It, it says, then the, 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 then, then the king gave orders, and, and they brought the man out who had maliciously accused you. Let me tell you something, man. God is a God of revenge. But he'll tell you that revenge is mine, not yours. Because I know what to do. Now watch this. He says this. He, he says, you know, and then they, they cast them, the men, watch this, their children, <laughs> their wives, into the den. Now you read that and go, oh my God, that is so tragic. Well, let me tell you something, man. That was part of the Persian way of doing things. If the dad messed up, the whole family had to go. Well, let me say this to you this. I'm going to say this else to you. When you understand that your sin affects your mom, your daddy, your brother, and your sister, when you realize you mess up where well, it messes up everybody, then you have an appreciation of walking with God. Let me tell you something. One guy messed up, and we all, Suffer the consequences. Know his name? Call him Adam. Yeah. So don't you think you're on an island by yourself. And I'm not saying God's going to hold you responsible for what somebody else does. But as an individual, you just need to know, man, your behavior affects everybody. Now, here's the last few scriptures here. I'm going to read it through, and then I'm going to close. Are we Okay. Because I, I have something to say to you at the end. I do. Now, now, now here's where the humor is. It's not humorous to the family. <laughs> okay. And, and they had not even reached the bottom <laughs> of the den before the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Now, now this is like that. For 18 hours, these brothers couldn't even eat. I'm pretty sure there were some women lying in there too. For 18 hours, they couldn't even speak. Daniel comes out of the den, and no sooner than they cast those people in, they can't even hit the ground, and they're served up like hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Boom. K -k 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 -k. Snap, crackle, pop, man. Now, that's tragic, but it's reality. It's reality. Now, guess who saw that? The king. Remember when Nebuchadnezzar threw Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire furnace, and he no sooner looked through the window, and he saw four instead of three. He says, well, wait a minute, and the fourth one looks like the Son of God. See, God humbled this king. See, God will humble your leader if you stay humble. 
God will humble the people over you if you let him use you to do what he wants to do. Watch this, to the people over you. Just be what God is calling you to be. And the king saw it. Guess what happens? This is the ending of this message. Listen to it. Listen to it. He says, look, then Darius, king, wrote. That means if he wrote it, it became document. It became a living document. It says he wrote it, okay? It, it says that he wrote to all the peoples, the nation, the men of every language who were living in the land, may your peace abound. Now, what does he mean by that? You know what he means by that? He means that when a leader does what he's supposed to do, the people up under them are at peace, so he declares peace. But watch this. Now what you're getting ready to hear as the closing of this is that Darius recognizes, watch this, the power of God. Recognizes it. He recognizes it so much that he has to explicitly, specifically say something about how the power worked. And I don't know about you, but after a big victory, after something God does that's magnificent, do you just go, Psh, thank you for getting me out of that one? <laughs> oh man, do you fall on your knees and say thank you? Do you fall on your knees and give him glory and give him thanks for the little stuff? Give him thanks for saving your life. Give him thanks for protecting you from yourself. This is what Darius does. Now listen to this real close as we close. He says, I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom, men are to fear and tremble before the God of Daniel. Now I will say this to you before I finish this sentence here. The ult of accountability in a man's heart is his fear of God. That is the ultimate of questions all the time of my life. And when things go in my family, I go and share that with them. They share things with me that's in their family. It's, it's confidential. It's real. And sometimes before I even think about doing something, I got to think about my wife. I got to think about my children. I got to think about those pastors. I got to think about an entire university that I'm accountable to. But the ultimate accountability is to God himself. And when that's on first base, everything else falls into place. Watch what he says. He says this, for he is the living God and doing forever, living. His kingdom, which means sovereignty, is one which will not be destroyed. His dominion, which means pure manifested power, will for be forever. And then he says, he delivers and rescues and performs signs and wonders. Jesus got to the point when people ran to him, when you just heard Michael read that last gospel piece, and unless you people see signs, you can't believe. Because Jesus knows what signs do to people. Because it's a sign and it's a wonder. And it is so obvious, it is so real, it is so big, the only thing you can say is God did it. And they got so used to the sign and wonder, they forgot the one who did it. So we close. He says he does signs and wonders in heaven and on earth who has also delivered Daniel from the lions. My statement to you today, are you in a situation right now in your life where somebody has made a decision that somehow puts you in a lion's den? I don't know what it is. It could be emotional. It could be physical, spiritual. I don't know what it is. God is saying, look, if you continually be with me, stay with me, pray with me, if you continually serve me, I'll come into that den and I'll deliver you. And I'll give you a sign 
and a wonder. Because so that the one who puts you in it will also be changed. Father in heaven, we thank you for this moment that you are a deliverer, you're a rescuer, and you do signs and wonders today to let us know that you're still our God and you're not done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To him who is able to deliver you from lions to rescue you, even in a den, he is able to do far above anything you can ever dream of. From one generation to the next, his dominion and his kingdom last forever. His name is Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Go in grace. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.